Today I'm in the beautiful parish of Saul, located in extremely rural Norfolk, with a lovely church up to my right and lovely countryside all around. And this location is also within Virgin Media O2's 3G switch off cluster for the Norwich area, which includes an absolutely enormous footprint. The site behind me on top of the water tower is one such location within this O2 3G switch off cluster. This is a low band only site with 700 megahertz 5G as well as 4G on 800 megahertz and 900 megahertz as well as 2G 900 megahertz at the moment. Now with 3G switch off, what is likely to happen is that we'll see 15 megahertz paired of 5G on 900 megahertz facilitated by spectrum clearance. And this is important for delivering maximal capacity from the spectrum available. We've actually already seen 15 megahertz paired of 900 megahertz used for 5G in Stevenage, just north of London. And I'm sure with 3G switch off, as it becomes more widespread, we'll hopefully see this spread more as well. The Norwich cluster isn't the only location that O2 has recently switched 3G off in, with the Guildford cluster also being switched off at the current time. Now this suggests that O2 are uh, trying 3G switch off in a number of different vendor and host operator areas to then assess how it goes to scale up across the rest of the United Kingdom over the coming period. The important thing really is that it gets done with as minimal customer impact as possible or ideally no customer impact and that includes both end human users as well as machine to machine devices such as smart meters as well. However, 3G switch off is not the only spectral transition we've seen from Virgin Media O2 so far in 2025. Most impressively, we have witnessed a rapid increase in the amount of 80 megahertz contiguous N78 bandwidth sites available and with that a dramatic increase in the amount of 5G performance that is achievable in a number of locations. I tested the performance of some Ericsson vendor Virgin Media O2 sites to recently gain 80 megahertz of contiguous N78 and was achieving quite regularly over one gigabit per second in non-standalone 5G, with bandwidth also coming from 2600 megahertz 4G or band 38. The 80 megahertz bandwidth on the N78 also improves uplink performance quite significantly. And it's meant that I would quite often see upload throughputs of over 100 megabit per second outside of great signal condition environments the increased n78 bandwidth from 40 megahertz in those areas has dramatically improved in building performance as well as throughputs in other less good signal condition localities in fact inside a shopping center I was achieving nicely over 400 megabits per second, despite quite weak signal, largely due to the benefits of this 80 megahertz N78 carrier. Moving away from the Ericsson radio access network areas onto Nokia ones, and I first saw N78 80 megahertz on O2 in Nokia, I think back in around about 2022. But in that time since then, it has spread dramatically in footprint in London, especially 
with you being able to see 80 megahertz and 78 in really quite a lot of locations in London now. And just like with the Ericsson 80 megahertz sites, performance tends to be really very good. So around the O2 Arena, this was a screenshot of performance that I got just out from coming out from the underground. And you can see it's, it's, it's very impressive at the surface level when you can see the massive MIMO and the panels, but also actually with less good conditions, the 80 megahertz N78 in the Nokia area also tends to perform as impressive as these numbers are. Virgin Media O2 will be gaining even further spectrum due to the Vodafone 3 merger. Now, the details of this are quite complicated because the migration of the spectrum involved includes a number of steps before it finally moves over to Telefonica UK Limited. But at the end of the process, O2 will have a considerable gain in spectrum, specifically 20 megahertz of supplementary downlink spectrum, 9.4 megahertz paired of 2100 megahertz, as well as 20 megahertz of 3500 megahertz unpaired, and also 25 megahertz of 2600 megahertz unpaired spectrum as well. The details around the trades and the dates involved are on the Ofcom Spectrum Trades page, which I'll link in the comments. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And let me know if you've got any questions in the comments and I'll try and answer them as best as I can.